Bill? Yes, sir. What happened, Martin Luther King? Uh, I didn't call you back because it was 4 o'clock when he finally called. Right, but uh, the whole arrangement is is this, that they will march. They'll march at the same point they were. They'll sing and pray for less than an hour and then disperse peacefully. Father says he will uh, uh, he will, he will maintain law and order. Uh, he doesn't know what will happen to the rowdies and tusks, but he will maintain law and order. He said he's talking about calling up uh, the National Guard, which we don't want him to do. Uh, and the, uh, the way we suggested to Ellington that he handle it is to say that that uh, he doesn't, he's just talking as an individual, but he knows that the telegrams and everything have been flowing in to Washington, urging the president to do something, and that if Wallace uh, calls up the National Guard uh, to halt the march, it'll only increase the pressure on on uh, justice to uh, uh, use the National Guard to protect the marchers. So uh, Ellington is at this very moment talking to Wallace. And uh, that's where it stands. Very tenuous, but that, that's it. Why wouldn't they go with the other, what they agreed on earlier? Uh, join the court, join, and then send, send the... Uh, yeah. uh, he says that his left... Who is he now? King says yeah. his left wingers will not uh, let the day go by without some symbol of a march. With all these people pouring in there, he's just got to establish that they have the principle at least to march. And uh, the pressure was just too much, he claims, from that time. Uh, Katzenbach told me about seven that he talked to him again and that he was very fearful for his life and he really wanted out of it, that he couldn't get out of it, at least a token march around Selma at this time. We'll start at uh, 11 o'clock our time and uh, the best we can do now is just uh, hope that Wallace will be true to his word and the king will break them up peacefully after 35 or 40 minutes of singing and praying. Well now, what are we doing uh, uh, in the way of federal people there? Uh, we have more than the usual number of FBI agents and uh, uh, that's about it. The question is, do, should, should extra marshals go in there? And there's a bad and good side to that. The bad side is that any, any effort to put a federal presence in there will only likely cause a, a Wallace to feel that he's being pressured and confronted. And uh, he might go in the wrong direction. The problem is that if there are no more federal presence there than the FBI and John Doerr, uh, how does it look if things go wrong? And uh, we've done nothing more than that. Risk on either side. And I think Captain Back leans to just uh, doing nothing more than, than what we're doing right now because of the delicate nature of the agreement. Shouldn't we have something to say about it this morning? Uh, let me talk to Captain Back. You mean that? Uh, I, I, yes, I think so, Mr. President. I think we would say that that Captain Back has uh, has. Uh, 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 gone in as a friend of the court, and that the, you very much hope that this will will go into the uh, into the court, and that uh, favorable resolution will be achieved that way. Cats back want to make say something a little stronger, that and then, and then come out strong on, for voting and the right to vote and the protection of the rights of the individual and the use of uh, the courts and the federal government to enforce the court decision, because. Uh, Wallace indicated yesterday, in fact, he said he wanted this to go into the courts. But Nick and I will work on a statement and have it before too long. Okay, I'd, I'd have it for sure when, uh, when uh, George... All right. Uh, All right. I'll get it time, though, for you to look at carefully. Okay. Thank you.